Welcome back, everyone, to TNO, the last of Europe. I'm your host, Mr. Mokalover. And now we must continue with our little adventure learning about Ireland. So I've already done Lamas's Rising Tide. I've already done McEntee's Austerity. But now we must do Korish's New Republic. Relief and Stimulus will be dispatched immediately. Seemingly endless compromise talks and under the table threats to break the coalition of Labour's economic proposals are not entertained. Have one out. The Shiki Coalition has agreed to commit to Brendan or Brendan Korsh's New Republic Plan for Economic Regeneration. After all these years of domination by the right, Korsh has declared that the 70s will be socialist and that this plan is how Ireland will get there. The party of Colony, Colony, oh, Connolly is in the driving seat. Yes, the party of Connolly is in, in the driving seat. My apologies for the mispronunciation. Actually, I had a teacher whose last name was Connolly. And I totally forgot that up until this point, so... It is what it is, my friends. It is what it is. Cool. Hope you guys are having a good day. But I do want to see what this path is going to be like since we've already done the other two. At least I have. You probably already checked them out. Maybe. Maybe not. If you haven't, go ahead and check them out. But if you have, thank you very much. Cool. And let's go ahead and with the New Republic. Now, like I said before, when I did Mac and T's Austerity, I will go ahead and let you guys read these events like right now. If you'd like to read this one, please go right ahead. Who's Clint Eastwood? But with all these on the right side... I don't want to reread them, so if you'd like to, you can go right ahead. So we can root out corruption. Probably a very, very good idea. And let's see. Yes, lesser opinion of us. Doesn't matter. Make sure that you get rid of all the corruption. Bread and roses. The equal growth plan. Okay. Interesting. State of the worker. Uh, wider middle class. And the pensions bill. Ooh. I'll do that. We'll do that. As soon as we get more support. So how about uh, some public approval? Let's get some income. The equal growth plan. The primary objective of the Equal Growth Plan is to ensure that the economic recovery comes to everyone in Ireland, not just the rich and the corporate interests. It is ludicrous to think that a man with wealth is the equal of a man without, and so the wealthy of Ireland will bear the biggest burden in some in pulling the country out of depre depre depression. My apologies. The rich will help the poor and all will benefit. Korsh is confident that this plan will meet with wide approval, that all necessary now is to unveil it to the public. Cool. And Korsh's new republic. Deputy, you... You'll be live in just a minute. Brendan Corris nervously straightened his tie. Ireland was ailing, and in his mind, its future depended on selling his agenda to the people. The radio announcer began his introductions, my fellow Irishman. Today, I'm happy to introduce you to Deputy Brendan Corris of the Labour Party, who will address the governing coalition's solution to our economic crisis. Corris took a deep breath today. I will have to come to address what many of you have been wondering. What will we do in these uncertain times? Some of my fellow deputies have proposed opening our markets, enabling free trade with America. Others have proposed a return to the old economic ways of our parties, however. The issues of our time cannot be solved with free markets of the old ways. We need a new republic. A new republic that serves the people of Ireland. A new republic where economic prosperity is enjoyed by all those who contribute. Those who cannot work any longer will finally get the help they deserve. The workers will finally receive the means to collectively bargain for a better workplace. Finally, I promise health care will be expanded and better available for those who need it the most. There will be more to our plan for the economy, but at this time, this is all I can promise you. Thank you. A new republic for all of us. All of us. Bread and roses, a wider middle class. We probably want to do a wider middle class first. Let's get all this stuff done, and we're going to do all this stuff, and then we'll go down, go down here. Oh, what can we do here? Ooh, anything here? Oh, Tricky Dick is gone. Raise officer salaries? Why not? We don't like corruption here. And what we really want to do is beat up the enemies. To the wicked go the spoils. If you like to hear about this, please go redhead. She's going to love this. Oh, wider middle class. Social mobility is an important concern of the Republic. Our middle class is small but economically potent, and we can strengthen the economy of the nation by making sure that this section of society continues to grow. The government shall make it easier for workers to better themselves in their situations by providing help in such areas as home buying, access to education, and poverty relief initiatives. This will pay a huge dividends in taxes and future economic growth and greater economic power in the future. So if you want to read about a panic report, please go right ahead, all according to plan. Nice. And let's beat up some uh, terrorists. We love beating terrorists up here. Send weapons? Eh, that's kind of okay. We don't really need to do that one yet. And there's nothing we can do about this, too. with Because there's no bill in, the, in uh, Congress. Or the deputy system. Or what do we call it? The NIC. No, not the NIC. The Dole? The old giant. Yeah. Irish Dole. Actually, ooh. Yeah. Yeah. We love it. 
And then the state of the worker. <clears throat> no country can thrive in the long term if the working class is not thriving. The workers are the bedrock of the economy and any problems they have will reverberate throughout society as a whole, sending fault lines upwards. We must ensure that our workers are happy and secure, but we cannot do that if we lack a clear understanding of their problems. A commission will be established to assess the condition of the workers of Ireland and enable us to identify and deal with issues facing them today. Honeymoon, there you go. And there goes President Kennedy. Just takes seconds to die, unfortunately. This is going to take a while. Let's see. Nice. And corruption. No more corruption. And they're still friendly to us, which is fine. Let's cut down that debt, my friends. 770 million, not bad. And then, ooh, we have to wait to do that one. So, bread and roses. Social Democrats the world over sing out bread and roses as a rallying cry. Now that the populace deserves to have to have not only the necessities of life, but also the things that make life worth living. The time has come for our government to make this slogan a reality for our people. We shall ensure peace, stability, and happiness throughout Ireland. Yes, it is bread we fight for, but we too, we fight for roses as well. Cool. Land auction. Let's keep going down, just in case. You never know. And we got about less than a week for that. Not bad. Because everything else here is getting pretty darn god-awful. Oh, mama. And this is still going down by what? 1.75? Oh, that is not very good. Not very good, my friends. And then we'll probably do Ulster Goodwill. Uh, President's visit. Late, late show appearances. Look to the past. We'll probably do RTE history broadcast. So if you'd like to read about this, please, please go right ahead. And once we get more stability and... Or no, we get war support and political power. Leaky fossils will get the wrench. There you go. If you like to read about that, there you go as well. But we must come back here as well. Raise officer salaries, yes, yes. They're not going to become more corrupt because we kept giving them stuff. Disturbance at dinner? Oh, no. Don't worry, Quinny. The gunshots aren't UVF. Now finish your peas. RTE history broadcasts. Nice. And, favorite thing to do, cut down the terrorists. The Welsh Revolution, which I've done that path before. I think some people did want me to play as Wales again sometime, but we'll get there eventually. Probably. Probably. Up next, we'll probably do it late, late. Late, late show appearances, so there you go. If you like to do that, please go right ahead. But I think it's time to check out the budget, perhaps. We love the budget. Not bad, less than 700 billion. Not bad, my friends. What are we building? Civvies! What should be done, done in less than three weak arenos? Alright, a small fellow. There you go. Another week, another pound. Very good. Very good. And we should should soon be able to do some of the stuff up here. They're still weak. They're, everyone's already very, very angry here. Very, very angry. There you go. And we got corruption. They like us a little bit more now. And a little bit less corrupt. Which is very good. After this one, we'll probably do the President's visit to Washington. Which will go very nice. But there you go, if you like to read that as well. Man, it seems like Russia's just falling apart. Then again, it already has fallen apart once. So, oh, Coon Scotland. And for this one, Waltz, interview the TDs. Oh, the party. Can we please go, Dad? Yes, we can. The lights finally go out. Ah, the President's visit. Nice. Oh, what the TD knew? There you go. If you like to read both of these events, please feel free to. Because I've already read them once, and I don't want to read them again, so. We should follow him home and see what he's up to, as well as a bit too late. Late. <coughs> The end of the South African War in 1964. Very good. And there you go. Nice. A meeting at the docks. Let's just go home, shall we? We shall go straight home. Ooh. Salaries, yes, yes. They like us a lot. They're a little bit corrupt, though. A little bit corrupt. And then... Ooh, better rifles. We love better rifles. APCs, anti-tanks, port equipment... And murderize, and then some of that. There you go. And you eating supper. There you go. Stay with me, Lilane, please. Followed up with Celtic Brotherhood. Cool. Ah, terrorism has no place in our Ireland. And if you want to read about the next one too, I'm just gonna go and show show you guys all these off screen on screen already. So if you like about that, please go ahead. Planning the raid. We're gonna go to the ICG, which makes sense. Actually, let's click on that one first. Thank you. ICG. So you can read that one. You can read with this one as well. Meet with the Jews. And then looking to the past. Not bad. Nice. An anonymous tip. Yes, sir. Yes, 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 sir. 
Not bad, 1.1 1 .1, uh, GDP growth, not terrible. Could be worse. Also good world tours, very good. Cut, 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 cut. Oh, we made another city, nice. The raid on the warehouse is very good, very good. Margaret Thatcher has been elected prime minister, which is nice. And the root out some more corruption, yes, please. Not that corrupt. These are plans to take over Dublin. Oh, no. Who would ever want to do such a thing? I would. Probably as the UK, though. I wonder when they're going to go to war with uh, Cornwall. Actually, does Cornwall have a unique focus tree? That'd be really cool they did. Franz Halder, vacation to the capital. New Blaine is in league with the ICG. Oh, no. Who knew that that, that was the case? Oh, no. I totally didn't know that. Oh, good. And attrition planning, because that's better than the defensive one, because we have no tanks. And then we're going to meet with the Jews. You, me, and contentious people, those Northern Irish. Nice. Less than, half, less than 600 billion, barely over five, over half a billion left in debt, which is very good. Alright, and then we'll do look to the past, and then we'll do the pensions bill and start doing, actually, uh, you know what, let's do the pensions bill first. We will introduce a bill in the Dole to reform state pensions for our working force. Work, work first. Workforce. Along the lines of social insurance. The state will pay out a pension based on contributions given throughout workers' lives, meaning that the more workers they put in, the more they get back in their pensions after retiring. We hope this will encourage people to work more and contribute more to the economy during their careers while also providing them with a secure standing secure standard of living in their old age. Pensions bill. And there you go, very weak. We love it. We love it. And now we got more than enough PP, we're going to make it more radical. And then get the hardliners on board. More police? They love the police. And compromise? Who cooperate? I don't know about that. Encourage them. Oh, what do you do, you guys, too? UV, UVF terror? Oh, no. Whatever will we do? Come out, you black and tans. Come out and fight me like a man. Nice. I wonder if we can make it even more radical. That'd be kind of fun. I wonder, can we cooperate more with this group? Probably not worth it. We're at what level cooperativeness? We are at 58.9%. Not bad. Oh, we get this up top here. Oh, let's make it more radical. Pensions bill is good. Uh, encourage. Compromise. There you go. We're going to get it, my friends. All right, let's grab some more of this. And if you'd like to read about look to the past, please go right ahead. Boom! 76 is still pretty good. We made it quite radical, I think. Fourth stage for the pensions bill. Not bad, not bad. And LBJ, big ol' LBJ's here. Big ol' stud muffin, big ol' jumbo. Can't need to promise, but can Nixon deliver? Or Nixon, LBJ deliver? Probably. The Left United. If you'd like to read about that, please go right ahead. More cooperation with the uh, labor and the libs. L lab and lib. We could de-radicalize it, but now we're good. I wonder how much it's going to empower the left now. 18% and... The bill passes. A change for the better, or so we hope. Empower the left wing. Low pensions, acceptable pensions. Better poverty. Good, good, good. And now they're 21%, so we got 3% more popularity. Oh, huh. It's not bad. Could be worse. Could be a lot worse. And then the 1964 trade union bill. The trade unions up to now have not played the role they should have in Irish society. This is not the fault of the unions. They have struggled to organize due to a lack of rights for unions and their members. Of course, this proposed trade union bill will ensure some of these rights as well as collective bargaining without fear of reprisal from the employers and prevent discrimination of any kind against union members. The real citizen guard? Alright, well, that's very nice. Alright, let's see what we can do. Let's make it more radical and get some of you guys. Thank you. And then get some of you guys. There you go. Almost perfect. Almost perfect. And which we'll go over here and spend some more pee pee and encourage. Okay, then we're done. We're going to make things very radical. But if they're not radical, it's not fun, right? But happy 1965, everyone. Hope you're having a great, tremendous year. Nice. They love us. They really love us. So, 76 is pretty good. Oh, what's that? Some weapons, you radicals build? No, we're good. So, since we don't have a focus that we can do, we got to wait for the last next one to finish. The Economic Development Bill. Ireland is a chronically underdeveloped country, which has freely allowed its capital to be exported to the greatest money market in the world. This is a policy entirely unfavorable to home industries struggling to establish themselves, especially difficult to deal with that at a local level. The Economic Development Bill will establish temporary planning committees in county council 
areas. Using local expertise and knowledge to direct government investment at grassroots level, the government will invest its capital at home instead of letting it be siphoned off abroad. Oh, restart ad will projects. I probably should have done this one a little bit earlier, but that's all right. That's fine. Whatever. Military coup in the kingdom of... Oh! Okay, then. The bill passes. Good. And non-socialist trade unions are allowed with all trade unions are allowed. Nice. And there we go. Make it more radical. Oh, wow. This one has no support. Oh, this one's that's actually really not good then. Um, which one are we doing yet? Quark, Leinster, Galway. Dinner with Scottish and Welsh companies. Lower tariffs. Good, good, good. More funding is nice. Uh, do that, do that. There you go. Hmm. We're not going to have enough people for this, are we? Very weak, which is good. This, uh, my, no, I, should have, I should not have done what I did there. There you go. That lowers cooperativeness with everyone else, which sucks, but whatever. Hardliner denounces this, so that sucks. Our country joins the pact. If you wonder about that, please go right ahead. Economic development. Nice. Uh, the mother and service and child service bill. Okay. Initialize that. Well, we have a lot less political power than I would have liked here, but that's all right. Cooperate, you guys. Encourage. I can't do that one either. So that kind of sucks. We're at the mercy of these TDs, man. Uh, do we max? Oh, they're not quite maxed out, but... Oh, these guys... You know what? Oh, can we do this one in time? We actually might be able to. We need two more, so... We could de-radicalize it, but still... Then every 14 days. Hmm. As we got both these done, that's nice. 64, and grab some of this. Nice. What else we got here? Money? Oh, funding? Yes. There you go. So that thing's all glitched. Oh, I don't want to spend any more PP for that. We're good enough for now for that stuff, so. Just a few more, guys. Just a few more. And then we can push it. There we go, we got it. We barely got it. That's a lot of pee-pee, though. Alright, so we're going to get that one. The Mother and Child Service Bill. To date, Ireland's women and children have suffered under antiquated social responsibilities and a disregard for the special health care needs they have. The Mother and Child Service Bill, if it passes, will allow all Irish women under and under 16 to receive medical care free at the point of use, subsidized by the government or taxpayers. This will be a huge improvement for circumstances of some of the most vulnerable in our society. Alright, got more civvies and millies. Not bad. Nice, very nice, very nice. Oh god, no. We need. Ooh, we might want to de radicalize this, actually. Alright, with 65, that's a little better. That's a little better. Um, expand the police. They usually like doing that one. And I need. we need five. Hmm. LPs. Concessions? That hurts our war support. Reduce police. And then encourage would cost quite a bit more political power. We can only get 1.32 every single day, which is not bad. All right, oh, we just need one more. We might get a special event saying that we can do it, but let's go and read the next one, maybe. The Dublin protest of 1965. We'll lose a lot of... Po oh, that's not good. Conservatism is a huge force in Irish society, and we might have underestimated just how fiercely people believe in keeping things the way they are. The Mother and Child Service Bill was caused uproar after it was understood that free birth control comes from under health care for the women of our country, and every priest and pub loudmouth in the country has been mouthing off about the immorality of this. Protests have failed the streets of Dublin, led by church groups and TDs from... Uh, Fina Gael and Fin uh, Fo Fail and are blocking the bridges over Li Liffey. We have to find ways to deal with this unrest or the country could grant to a halt over something as simple as contraceptives. Because, yes. Funding. Uh, we could continue to de radicalize it. Uh, third stage. We've already done that once, though. Uh, we might have to do that if we have to. I kind of want to wait. I kind of want to keep some people because we might need it later on, so. Do, 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 do. Corruption is still not good. Oh, we need that one, too. Uh, that's good. Extremely weak, which is good, good, good. Come on, come on, random event. Help us out. Help us out, random event. Actually, we do this one, actually. Drusher wins. 
Instead of spending 30, I'd rather do this one again. Ah, just do that one. There you go. Yeah, we got it. Cool. The other protests are nice. And promises in the dole. Small cooperation, fighting poverty. Yes. The best way to get the support of the man in the street is to improve his material conditions. Poverty is still rife in Ireland as, as the country struggles with the impact of centuries of deliberate underdevelopment. As a government that has interests of its people at the forefront of our minds, we will establish anti-poverty measures at the local level to ease a burden on the poorest in our society and make them productive members of the nation and the economy. Subsidized child care and vaccination initiatives, for example, would have a huge effect on the health and economic well-being of our people in a very, very short time. Nice. Well, let that go by a little bit too fast. The state of education. Irish education is stuck in the past like so many other, other things in the country. Most schools are controlled by the Catholic Church, and comparatively few children go through secondary schooling when compared with other countries. We need to modernize the education system, providing free secondary schooling for all children, and ensure that the curriculum is decided by teachers rather than priests. In particular, we will introduce economics classes for older children, teaching principles of social democratic... Uh, regulation, economic regulation, so that catastrophes like this depression can be avoided in the future. How's the bill doing? Oh, it's finally almost done. There you go. Bill passes. Slightly part of the left wing. The, so we get the national spirit, the moderate mother and child service bill. We get more daily political power. Nice. Comms, you reunify them. Actually, what else? Can we do anything else here yet? No, no, Bill. That's good. That's fine. Uh, dinner with them? Yes, yes. Because I did put a lot of people, a lot of things here, so. There you go. And just in case, get some planes. You never know if we actually need these, so. There you go. And there you go. Do we need more artillery? And there you go. And there you go. Cool. Oh, we don't have a lot of approval, which is not very good, but whatever. Oh, and let's keep spending money. We love spending money. Who doesn't? Less corruption, please. Good. Not that corrupt, but they will be soon enough. Promises to the church. The Catholic Church is an immensely powerful institution in Ireland, and all the opponents to the mother of the child service bill, they are the fiercest. Every priest rules like an autocrat in his own parish, and with the full backing of bishops and cardinals, then most will not hesitate to interfere in the personal lives of their parishioners. In this context, they see the bill as a direct insult and attack by the government on the legitimacy of the social control. But no matter how we feel about the church's dominance in Irish society, we cannot afford to upset them too much. We must engage the church leadership in dialogue and reassure them that we are not enemies, and that Christian principles of charity and care take precedence over their concerns about the bill. If we can get the cardinals and bishops to calm down, the priests and their congregations will follow. All right, night vision. And green lines in the stock market. Tell me about that one. At long last, the depression is showing signs of ending. The Dublin Stock Exchange is no longer the gloomy place it has been in recent times, and the traders and businessmen strolling along the Dame Street will have a spring in their step once again. It would be foolish to counter chickens before they've been, all been hatched, but it seems like our policies have paid off. The economy is in the green again, and Corus's New Republic is being vindicated day by day. Very cool. I wonder what event we're going to get with the promises to the church. Promote Christian socialism, huh? But promises to the church. The apse of the St. Mary's Cathedral is truly a sight to behold. Our marble carving of Jesus ascending to the heavens, flanked by his apostles, lay above the altar for the whole mass to see. But today, there wasn't hundreds of the faithful in the pews, just two men having a quiet talk. Father, it's quite concerning how hard Archbishop McQuaid has rallied the church against the mother and the child bill. Indeed, Brendan, I feel that they're missing what's really important to our faith. What do you mean, Korsh asked? Yes, expansion of health care to a young woman and children would mean they would have easier access to birth control, but this bill is so much more than birth control. Our Lord preached that we should care for the impoverished and suffering, and with better health care for most, our most vulnerable, we, could, we would be fulfilling his wishes. Though I do not have some reservations about this act's potential harm to the unborn, I believe the good that will come from this outweighs all of that. Then can, I can count on your progressive-minded clergyman to support our bill. Father Cunningham nodded. Now, if you excuse me, deputy, I have some private matters to attend to. The two men shook hands. The heals, he heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. Alright, and less than half a billion is very good. And raise officer salaries? Yes. Nothing says suppression corruption like raising salaries. Privatize and sell? Cool. We want more approval from them. Good, good, good. And now we have enough to do this. There you go. Thank you. Thank you. And farewell to depression. Promote Christian socialism. While Orthodox Leninists and Bukharinists might claim that religion is incompatible with socialist principles, Brandon Korsh disagrees and in intent has described the Labour Party as a Christian socialist party. Didn't the apostles themselves share their property between them and devote their lives to helping the vulnerable? <clears throat> Didn't our Lord, there's nothing to say that Christianity, Catholicism, Catholicism even, must be the uh, preserve, preserve of the conservatives. 
the scriptures say otherwise, and so does man's conscience. Ireland is a deeply religious country. Our best chance to promote socialist values is to make the obvious connection with Christian principles and promote a Christian socialism that will advance the cause of Ireland and Christ. Lose wars, but get more stability, empower the left wing, get more political power. All right. And dinner. Yes, we like dinner. Dinner's usually pretty good, right? I'd say dinner's usually pretty good. But I could be wrong about that, maybe. All right. Infrastructure is zero. I wonder what the whole thing with the IRA is going to be like this time. Because we're going to choose the other path that I've not chosen yet. Civvies, yes. Yes. Very nice, very nice. And we have no war support. Eh, go figure. And after this, we will, uh, I want to save this one for last. Maybe it promises... No, fair will to depression first. The New Republic has proved its worth. Detractors said it was pie-in-the-sky idealism, but Brendan Korsh and the Labour Party have shown it was pragmatism instead. And the economic realism need not be synonymous with callousness and austerity. The worst effects of the Depression have disappeared, and even the less ruinous effects have been mitigated and effectively combated. A new Ireland is ahead of us, with foundations laid for a strong and prosperous nation following principles of Christian socialism. The 70s will be socialist, just as Korsh said. A frog in the pot? Well, there you go. If you like to read about that, we must fall solve the case, and fast. All right. Civilian budget boost. We're going to need as much civilian budget boost as possible here. Oh, boy. Root out corruption. Very nice. Oh, military. Eh, we don't really cut that out, probably, but whatever. All right. Emergency meeting. There you go. Doherty's hand went up. Cool. All right. How are these guys doing here? Ooh, 50%. We could get more money, then. More military factories, then, just in case. Half a billion every quarter. It's very nice. A hidden answer. There you go. If you like to read about that, please go right ahead. And civvies. Time to ask Kelly some hard questions. Fair to depression. To deal with the backlash to the mother and child service bill, we need to tackle each disgruntled group head on. The representatives from FG and FF and the Dole can probably be appeased if we promise to implement some economic reforms along the lines of what they've been clamoring for previously. Their principled moral and theological opposition to birth control will undoubtedly disappear if we dangle free trade carrot in front of them. Farewell to depression. Today, the Irish stock market has hit its highest daily gain in decades, possibly since its opening back in 1799. Whether this growth is sustainable in the long term is uncertain, but without a doubt, the FF Labour Coalition plan has brought Corse turned off the radio and poured himself a glass, a glass of water, of course, because it was only 9 in the morning, and he was in a good mood. The pathway out of depression had been fraught with twists and turns. He'd almost lost everything when conservative FF debt but he surrendered in effect from the coalition over the anti-mother and child bill protests. But through careful negotiation and a compromise tariff bill with the help of McEntee, and the backing of several leftist priests, the coalition weathered the storm. Later that afternoon, Korsh took a stroll through his favorite park. He sat down at a bench, surrounded by nature. He'd done much of what he'd promised to the nation on that fateful radio address months ago. Those reforms hadn't been perfect and universally well received. He'd brought Ireland out of depression. The working class now saw more benefits and a much stronger vote. He finally allowed himself a precious moment, finally alone. No politics, no protests, just himself and nature. If Connolly was still here, he'd be proud. And construction is good. And cut down the debt. Nice. Less than 400 million is good. Jesus. Okay, that might be a bit. That might be a bit extreme for GDP growth. Yeah, I don't know, man. Earlier, I think it was like maybe four percent. In another time, we did this one. Um, if you want to read about this, please go ahead. But like four percent when I think either Lamas or McEntee, but nine and a half. That seems a bit extreme to me personally. Uh, I mean, yeah, we expect like you know quite a bit, but nine and a half. That's a bit extreme, I'd say. Dinner? Cool. Revisitation? Let's ask them ourselves. Let's ask, ask, ask away. Cool. And then... Oh, we're doing the bill. I forgot. No, we're not doing... Wait. Okay, we're not doing the bill yet. Detention without charge? All right, you have the green light on this. Inspector. The Tariff Bill Commission, or the Tariff Commission Bill. The original Tariff Commission was abolished in 1939, but reinstated after the German victory in the Second World War as part of the requirement for doing the Reichs Pact and restricting trade outside the bloc. We'll introduce a bill that alters the Tariff Commission's responsibilities, allowing trade with Scotland and Wales and slight increases on trade with OFN members. Uh, Fina Falls members will greatly appreciate this, as they've been advocating such changes for a while, and this will be an easy way to shore up the government support while also giving the economy a shot in the arm. Promises to Parliament even from his office, Korsh could hear the growing protests outside. They were much larger today, owing to the fact that many an Irishman had heard yesterday from Sunday Mass of the horror that would be done to unborn children if health care was made free for young women. 
Corsus had ached from the constant roar outside his office window. The fact that his phone was ringing did not help much either. Corsh reluctantly picked up the phone. A secretary's voice reached him, survived Deputy McEntee on the line. Before Corsh could object, she continued. He says he has urgent news. Corsh sighed, fine, put him on. Deputy Corsh, I believe you've seen the crowd outside Lancaster. This backlash could, should have been expected, Corsh. And this keeps up some of the more conservative deputies of Fianna Fáil. Cannot continue supporting your plans. Our coalition can't survive without their support, Sean. I know, I've got a solution. You can clear my tariff amendment and your economic plans. I'll take this inclusion into the, to those TDs to convince them they're getting something more out of this coalition than piss off constituents. Corsh pondered his options. Trade to Scotland and Wales wouldn't hurt, but reducing trade to the oil fan was almost too much to ask. Nevertheless, without a coalition staying together, none of those plans would be possible. The crowd outside had only gotten louder. Corsh sat again and answered, fine, whatever it takes to keep them on board. Let's make it more radical, because people will love that. Oh, it actually got more support. Nice. Usually, when you make it more radical, you get less support, but okay. They like the police, and uh, let's see. Cooperate even more. We got a lot of uh, pee, pee here, so we can do that one. Now we're, we're going <laughs> to... We expanded the police, and then we immediately cut them down. Go figure. The bash. Ooh. I right, you wonder about that, please go ahead. The bash, bash, bash. It's a monster mash, that bash. Alright, new taxes. No, we're good. ICG terror. Oh no. How are they so low well on working through the haze? Follow the money, my friends. We must follow the money. There you go. They still love us, and they're not that corrupt. The Tariff Commission Bill, very good. And I think that's it for this part of the focus sheet. So now we gotta see what options we will take when we have to deal with this terrorist threat. Throwing the book, we needed it. we merely needed your attention away from Belfast. Cool. The bell passes for the change for the better or so we hope. Oh, we slightly empowered the right wing. Look at that. So now the left wing is 36% while the right wing is 64%. Approvals, not too bad. Uh, Export focus? Hmm, okay. New taxes? No, we're kind of okay for now. Uh, I wonder how much more we can cooperate with these guys. The fate of the special zone, if you like it about that, please go ahead. I've already done put a bullet in Tuomi's skull before he outwits us again. I've already done snatch up the IRA and you have UVF, UVF compromise and force, com and force the compromise. Ooh. Ooh. No, I think I did this one last time. Heed the army's advice and declare martial law. I think I've already done that one once. So, we'll snatch up the IRA and UVF leadership and force a compromise. Now, yeah, we'll see what we can do about that. Hopefully, that's the one I didn't choose. Because if it is, then I'll go back and fix it up. I don't want to make a mistake. What might just work. And private and sell. There you go. And request more money. There you go. Nice. And uh, sure, why not? Cool. Lamas never had a choice in the end. He knew he could entrust the military to carry out an operation like this. Heck, he could even have the military do anything at all. A massive conflict at this time would break the country. And for what? To set Ireland back to the status quo? No, there was another option. To leak out bit of the news, not enough to be politically disastrous, but enough to get everyone to know what was going on. And then everyone, the army, the guard, or the UVA would be on full alert. It will be a tense situation, but it would be just a thing to get the moderate unionists to the table. Such a standoff cannot be won by either side, so that would nip any terrorist movement in the bud, and then they might be brought to the negotiating table. <clears throat> this is perhaps the most complicated and time-intensive plan, so many things could, could go wrong. There will be protests, certainly. There will be violence on the streets of Belfast, and not everyone who was responsible for the disaster will get justice. And at the end of the day, a single misstep could destroy everything that Lamas had worked for. But the war would be a peaceful and united Ireland under Fianna Fáil. And Lamas knew he, he was known as a man who could do what, what, what would do was necessary for Ireland and for the party. A maneuver to save an isle. The Minefield. We've decided the best way to deal with the arms crisis is through a peaceful resolution of the conflict, unfortunately. It isn't as simple or easy as just declaring that we want peace and calling it a day. The arms crisis didn't come out of nowhere. There are major tensions thrumming throughout Northern Ireland that have persisted for decades. Those simply won't disappear in the name of peace. Ian P Paisley desires tolerance for the Protestants of the North and independence for Ulster. Seamus Twomey desires armed revolution and personal power. Neither of, the, of these desires sit well with a dole or with each other and their respective followers. In a time where hatred and revenge are dr the driving forces of the day, negotiating a path to peace between the two wills, iron wills, of these conflicting desires will require na navigating a veritable minefield. And that's what we're here to do. Prevent leaks? Why not? 
Blaney's connection to the Irish Republican Army is something incredible. It really is a testament to the man's skills that he pulled off all he did. Unfortunately, this ever became public knowledge that any chance of peace would be thrown out of the proverbial window, into the proverbial street, and then into the proverbial sewer. This must stay secret by any means at our disposal. We shall set some loyal men to the task who will value peace over glory and those whose loyalty is unquestioned. There will be no commendations, no records, no notes. There will, they will do their duty for the good of Ireland. And they'll do their duty to the people with, and, and with any luck nobody will ever know. Which is good. And while we're doing that, we're probably going to have dinner and um, repress people. Nice. They have no strength. So why are we negotiating with them if they have no strength? I don't. I never understood that. That makes no sense to me. But the grandest plan. You want to do what? Asked Sean Lamas to Ion Keen. Keen had been a member of the Garda who had quite, quickly risen up to the top of his actions for the, on the arms crisis. And now he had a meeting with Sean Lamas, the current leader of Ireland. That's very simple, Mr. Lamas. As I'm sure you know, Paisley and Twomey are still on the loose after the past weeks, and we didn't have any leads on them until yesterday. We learned through agents embedded inside the paramilitary groups that they spread out across Ulster County. With this knowledge now, I propose a trap to arrest both, he said, motioning to the pamphlet placed on Lamas's desk. The T-Shock opened it and flipped through the pages. King continued, as you can see, the trap proposal where Rook has stated, we would propose a ceasefire and amnesty of the two agreed to meet with representatives of the Irish Garda along with you. Lamas recalled at the Sevilla. Hold on, this wasn't in your little stack of papers right here. As he motioned towards the pamphlet, King continued, almost looking like he expected Lamas to say that. Well, you have on a bulletproof vest, just in case. Plus, the guard will surround the meeting place, just in case things get hairy. Lamas looked at King and then back at the papers before applying. This may be just crazy enough to work, but we have to burn the evidence. Certain actions taken by certain people nominally under auspices of our own government were regrettable, and they were mistakes, and they threatened the attempt to a peace in Northern Ireland. And they were to be released to the general public, chaos could ensue. And so it falls upon us to take the hard choices and remove the evidence which could implicate members of our government in such actions. There will be a reckoning for this one day, but hopefully by the time anyone realizes something is amiss, Ireland will have long ago turned its swords into plowshares. <clears throat> hopefully. 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 And I can probably close out of this too. And cooperativeness is 60, almost two-thirds. Control the NIC. The North Irish Constabulary is an organization of dubious loyalty at the best of times, and right now the times are most assuredly not that. We are uncertain as to what exact degree it has been infiltrated by a variety of groups, and in identifying the who, why, and where this infiltration will be key to keeping the organization under our thumb. We do have some loyal men there, after all. It is merely a matter of separating them from the disloyal and incompetent. We might also be capable of working with elements who have similarly vested interests in peace. The Ulster Scots, for example. This is key to our goals because if the Constabulary cannot be convinced of peace, how the heck are we going to put in force? Put it in force between the paramilitaries. Just let everyone kill each other off. That's how you do things, right? Just let them kill each other off and pick up the scraps. Too bad that's not an option. Eh, that's kind of is though, but the disappearance of Hillsborough Castle files. Breach ordered the sergeant and the private colonel clutched his rifle tightly in preparation. A small powder charge cracked through the locks on the elaborate plow's door. The corporal was the first through the door with Connell and the others storming in right on his heels. Connell wasn't on crowd control, but a shock employee, or shocked employee in a worn gray suit was reaching into his coat right in front of him as, he might, though, as though he might pull a gun. Bad idea, mate. He called to the man, trying not to spook him, hands down where I could see him. The man nodded nervously and hoisted his empty hands into the air. Connell passed him by to follow the sergeant, letting the other special forces troops wrangle the disoriented staffer. Eventually, the team had stormed in enough ornate halls and subdued enough bewildered employees to reach the office. Connell's job was easy. He just had to watch the door, keep his rifle up while... While a crowd of underpaid interns sobbed quietly outside the office, the sergeant and corporal inside systematically photographed and then burned away all, any and all documents that involved intelligence and plans for dealing with the IRA and the UVF. They were out of the door ten minutes later, having done their duty to the nation. That's better this way. No one needs to know what happened on the road to Irish unity. No one needs to know. Not a single person. Not including us. Not even us. And we're us troublemakers. And we lose... 7% of that 10% stability that we're going to get. But the Northern Irish Constabulary has been brought to here, which means we can proceed with the next step of our plan. Ian Paisley is a man that will likely be a traitor to boot, but he's also one of the most prominent voices for the non-Catholic population in Northern Ireland. To all is equally as problematic, uh, uh, allegations of outright Marxism aside, the man will never accept a peace offered by the Unionists to begin with. So we should arrest them both, not kill them, merely arrest them. After all, it never hurts to be paranoid, and frankly, without these two running about, we can address some of the less simple problems with more freedom. Cool. Spend and slash. Nice. Anything else here? Save these? Cool. I'm the trust 30. Just in case, let's keep that one going for now. It's fine. Minus 700. Not bad. 
Stormont Emergency Meeting. The Northern Iron Assembly, known informally as a Stormont, has not been a especially powerful voice in the politics of our northern province recently, at least in part due to the fact that our government has spent much of its own downtime making sports of arbitrarily restricting its actions and powers. Despite this, we should, not, we should know that it's still technically the legal representation for the region. This gives it a certain sense of authority, authority we could use to end this whole farce. Were we to call an emergency session and put forth some resolutions, there would be technically the little... Uh, belittle the more arduent anti ulsterite voices could do. Getting from there to actually starting a peace process, though, will be quite the challenge indeed. Rounding up the enemies, though. Sean, Sean, Seanus, Seamus Twomey, close his eyes and savor the moment. It was to be his last, he knew, for the bubbling military police had accidentally made themselves obvious as they quietly lined up outside his residence and kicked down the door. He breathed in the air of his home, the sweet air of a free Ireland. His hands rubbed the soft and familiar upholstery of his favorite chair. Le Moss be darned, if Twomey was to be executed today, then he'd not spend his final moments of fear. The door slammed open, the government lapdogs poured into his home, shouting demands, yelling for him to cooperate. Seamus didn't open his eyes, merely enjoying the cool breeze of Irish air as it waved in, in with the thugs. He was ready! And yet, Tommy did not receive the bullet to his head that he expected, merely a blow to the forehead after he failed to follow the instructions. Tommy came back to consciousness in the back of an armored police truck. Next up, Long Cash Detention Center, muttered another man, handcuffed just as surely as Tommy himself was. He would have been surprised that, that he was alive, had he not been too busy being shocked at who was his comrade in chains was. Ian? Seamus exclaimed. Ian Paisley? Hey, you! You're finally awake! <laughs> a piece of moderate, so... O'Neill's unionists, at least some of them, and Fitz nationalists, again, at least some of them, are a small bastion of sanity in the chaotic mess of northern Irish political life. This leads them to being considered the default voice of reason by much of the northern populace on both sides of the fence. Thankfully, we can think we can think we can get them both to cooperate with the peace process. It'll take some work, with promises of respecting the legal boundaries of certain institutions, some more freedoms for the Anglican elements, and continue patronage to the Catholics, and so on and so forth. The important point is that if we have enough of them on our side, we don't need any of those who are less conductive to peace efforts anymore, which means we can address them more thoroughly. Meeting at Stormont, though, my friends. Sean Lamas looked out of the face of the forum. Some were smiling, some tried to look neutral, but a good of them were frowning. A few of them were glaring at him with nothing but spite. Some seats were even empty, with their would-be occupants refusing to be in the same building as him. Such was life in Stormont. Absences notwithstanding, the speech had to go on. He arranged his notes and began speaking, his voice low. Ladies and gentlemen of the North Irish Parliament, I didn't come here to speak to you about grand sweeping arrangements, or agreements, or decisive laws that can solve all of our problems with one in one fell swoop. It is folly to think that over 800 years of history can be forgotten with a stroke of a pen, or to think that history can be forgotten at all. Rather, I'm here to talk about the careful steps and cautious changes. Some may deride these movements as slow, ineffective, or paralyzed, but they are the only way to mutually accomplish change without leaving everyone satisfied. And I believe it is the only way to bring about change on this island so that anyone, northern or southern, Catholic or Protestant, nationalist or unionist, can help to accomplish anything. He continued to talk at length, expounding on the virtues of cooperation and finding common ground before ending with a quote from the Bible. He shall judge between the nations and shall arbitrate for many peoples. They shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nations shall not lift up swords against nations, neither shall they learn war any more. We'll see about that. The speech was met with muted applause from most of the MPs and disdainful sounds from the remainder. Far from enthusiastic clapping, he get his own party in the dole, but frankly better than he expected. It's a start. Ah, dinner time. You, me, and dinner. What could be better than that? Cool. Less than 200 million for debt. Negotiating is, well, non-negotiable. Paisley and Tawomi want con concessions for the agreement to a peaceful solution in Northern Ireland. We decided to, since their suggested concessions are mutually exclusive, to just stick home, stick them in the same room and see what comes of it. Hopefully, the tortured mess of a compromise they produce will result in something halfway there to an actual solution. Even if nothing of value comes of this, however, we'll still get the entertainment value of watching the two of Ireland's most notorious figures shouting at each other for hours on end. Perhaps we should consider recording it for posterity? Maybe. But at the same time, let's go and beat up the groups. Because we can, even though we don't even need to. I love it. There you go. Anything here yet? No. We're so close to cutting off the debt, though. 9.8%, that's extreme. The German question. Oh. This will severely impact our economy? Oh, well. Apparently, God is real because miracles like this just don't occur naturally. It seems that Paisley and Tuomi got along swimmingly in their mutual confinement. So much so that they've come to an agreement that despite their mutual differences and utter hatred for each other's causes, they agree that the real problem is Germany, because of course it is. The suggested red line for a peace agreement and the standing down of all paramilitary forces um, is Ireland's withdrawal from the pact immediately. This might be a risky move, but we really don't have any other options here. And we can blame the communists if things do go horribly wrong after all. Okay, so that's cool. So this must be like the actual like supposedly cannon path, because no wonder we're forced we were, we're literally forced every single time to join the uh, Einheitspact, so. Prison Roundtable. 
Seamus Twomley tapped his fingers on the cold or old wooden prison table. Ian Paisley, across from him, cuffed to the table just as Seamus was. A dozen guards were at the ready, clearly expecting violence between the two men. We've lost, then. Haven't we, Seamus? Both of us? Asked Paisley with a long sigh. Well, it was well fought, Ian. Very well fought. Tommy replied before taking a long swig of his water while a transcriber recorded every word. He quietly placed a cup on the table. Well... If that towel's gone, there's no use getting more people killed over it, is there? We ought to come to some sort of agreement like Dublin wants, ought we? I say we ought, yes, Ian said with a reluctant smile. If we must compromise, we can at least try to make it sure it's equitable. And I'm sure there's some things we can agree on, aren't there? Asked Tromi with a smirk and a twink. Naturally, smiled Paisley. If this is going to be agreement between Irishmen, I think we can come to an agreement or an arrangement that'll cause a few headaches in Germania, can't we? Oh, for God's sakes. Couldn't they have just done this years ago? No. No, we gotta fight for it. Peace in our time, though. For now. In spite of the harrowing prophecies of unending conflict and hatred between the North and the South, peace has prevailed. The fears of an entire Isle have been staved off as armed forces on both sides are standing down, marking the end of the tensions between the two. Oh, look at that. Oh, wow. For all their history and differences, Catholics and Protestants have found common ground to live together rather than fight. What has been seen as impossible in the past has been achieved, and for every man and woman and child is the better for it. Ireland has been saved. The Good Friday Agreement? Oh, that's cool. Wow. A lot of authoritarian democracy, oh, but okay, answering the German question. Sean Lamas was privately elated. As a politician, professionalism dictated that he did not cheer, no matter how much he may have done so in his private moments. In front of him lay the answers to all of his problems. In one fell swoop, he had not only put an end to the unending violence and unrest in the North, but also managed to get his nation out of the despised Reinhardt's path, while all the while not being able to act as if he had no choice in the matter whatsoever. The de-Germanization process had already begun across Ireland. German military advisors were being escorted to awaiting ships where they would be returned home to the Reich in shame. Similarly, uh, German-owned businesses would be boarded up, their former owners being similarly escorted to similarly awaiting boats. Some of the Taoiseach's financial advisors were already noticing a worryingly sh sharp downtick in the Irish economy, but Lamas dismissed the concerns as mere growing pains. Ireland would have to get a little bit worse before it got better. For now, Lamas was sitting at a small table in front of a crowd of reporters flanked by Paisley and Twomey on either side. In front of them were copies of the documents that had been drawn up, dubbed the Good Friday Agreement. Around them, cameras flashed, immortalizing the moment that Ireland would finally achieve peace. Picking up his pen, Lamas spoke, This is a historic day for all of Irish citizens. Today marks an end to the conflicts that have been threatened, threatening to drive us apart. Brother against brother, father against child, today Ireland is forged whole and becomes the master of her own destiny. And with the stroke of a pen, cameras flashing all around, the T shock brought peace once more to his triple nation and delivered Ireland out into the world, free as it always had wanted it to be. He could only hope that Germania would be more forgiving. It looks, wow, Comey. Look at Comey. Led by, oh, hello, Suslov and Samara. That is wild. And the Workers of Beer Federation won. Mr. Vitaly Kost Kostin won. And, wow, I would not want to be in Russia. Akutsk versus Divine Mandate. And then these guys. Oh, wow. There's a high chance for communists to win in the Civil War. Or, or you know, re reunify Russia, I guess you should say. Cool. We'll do that one. Nice. Request more funding. Yes, we have the funds. The Good Friday Agreement. Sean Lamas. <clears throat> Uh, smile out of the cameras as the IRA and Ulster volunteer force counterparts did the same, grinning cheerfully in their seats as the storm of parliament. Most would be cynically assuming that the smiles were forced, but Lamas knew from the long back and or forth as agreement was drafted that these two were quite genuinely happy to have salvaged something from the jaws of defeat. It was that knowledge that Lamas had leaned on when he ordered for there to be no abnormal military presence within views of the cameras. There would be no violence, everyone wanted this agreement to, to some degree. With my signature, I trust that we are building a sovereign Ireland today. Free of repugnant foreign influence, explained Seamus Twomey to the cameras as he scrawled his signature on the document. And, with the consent of the communities I represent, began Paisley, stumping into Twomey's place at the document after he was finished. We sent this document to safeguard the rights and freedoms of the Protestant communities and acknowledge that we are no more or less Irish than any man in Dublin. I have little to say, said Lamas when it was his turn. Say that Ireland is finally whole. Perhaps the first time it has ever been. I don't know if there's a super event after this, but let's see. Oh, look. And what are calling an unbelievable twist in the long and troubled history of Ireland, all sides in Ulster. Conflict has signed an agreement to cease all terrorist or armed activity. The press and UVF and under Ian Paisley sat down with Seamus, Tuomi's left wing Catholic SE, and Sean Lamas in Northern Ireland's Stormont Parliament to sign a peace agreement. The main terms of this deal were for Ireland to leave the pact and hold regional elections in exchange for a ceasefire. Any fear of economic fall caused by an abrupt departure from the pact seems to be ignored by the Irish population who are celebrating the peaceful resolution to the Ulster arms crisis. Doubtlessly, Lamas has saved Ireland's future and a new and glorious dawn is on the horizon and what started in 1960 finally ends. Well, I guess we don't get any super super event. We weren't even able to cut this down. I thought we were supposed to, our economy was supposed to take a hit, did it? 
Yeah, I don't know, man. What is, uh, the economy didn't take a hit. Did they, like, leave that out? Like, yeah, I know there's a lot of growth. And I, complained, I complained about this earlier, as you remember, guys. But, like, um, the economy didn't even take a hit at all. Like, I don't know. It, it's very weird. And we didn't even cut down all the debt, but... Oh well, let's go to cool, good, cool to see what Coruscant's Republic would have looked like, as well as ending this with a good Friday agreement. And, oh, we were so close, but regardless, whatever. If you enjoyed the video, though, leave a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow in another video. Thanks for watching, have a great rest of your day.